Aloha. Beat the dead horse for a little while. Hopefully, you can handle it. <laughs> is it most people's problem? Is it everybody's problem the same thing? And what is that? Well, is it? Everybody that has a problem usually dealing with something in the past, something from the past. Like how many people have a problem in the present moment? Well then we'd have to discover who's actually in the present moment. <clears throat> And we would discover that everybody that's actually in the present moment has no problems. Has no problem. Are problems and challenges the same thing? That's, a, that's interesting. We could talk about that too. We could say that, uh, you know, all problems are challenge or challenges I wouldn't necessarily say that all challenges are problems so uh, as with everything it would depend on where you're at but let's go back to what I'm talking about beating the dead horse that everybody that has seemingly has some sort of problems They're tethered to something in the past. Let's say we've got an alcoholic woman. Why is she drinking so much? Or a man, anybody, whoever. Why are they drinking so much? Well, their childhood... Uh, all this stuff happened in their childhood. It threw them out of balance. It threw them out of center. It traumatized them. And they don't want to think about that all the time. So it ended up deep in the subconscious mind as an energetic block. As energy that is stuck. And so that's affecting the flow of the entire uh, body. Just, you know, just the block itself. Not mentioning or not talking about all the drinking. The drinking is a way of keeping those memories... shoved down in the subconscious mind where it doesn't have to be consciously thought about and relived because nobody wants to relive trauma so you see then They have, they have uh, uh, defaulted, if you will, to belief. Because in the present moment, is any of that stuff from your childhood, uh, does it have the power to override your will? Does it have the power to magically make you depressed? Does it have the power to drive you to drink another fifth of gin? I 
And the answer is both yes and no. Yes, if you're willing to believe it. No, if you're truly in the in this at the zero point, because you realize you know. I mean, if you, I don't know if you've ever been to the zero point. I don't know if people can easily get here or not. I don't know how difficult it is for people to get to the zero point, but based on observation. I would say it must be fairly difficult because people choose beliefs even at their own detriment. I was just talking to a guy in the comments and he told me that, uh, you know, Satan's biggest trick was to get people to believe that he doesn't exist. To which I replied, the ego's biggest trick is to get you to recycle something from the past as though you just wrote it. And deeper questions. Does the... Does the alcoholic really want... Resolve... Or is it a, a sort of a game of hide and seek with the self? You know, I like this alcohol. I don't like my childhood. But I'll tell myself, you know, in those times when I do think about it, I'll tell myself, well, it's because of my childhood that I'm an alcoholic. It's because my childhood was so bad that I'm an alcoholic. So that's an excuse to continue to be an alcoholic. And it's just clear as day to me that it's belief. You're choosing then to believe and give power to your bad childhood in order to justify your current bad actions. Bad choices. energy that is stuck needs to be uh, released. How do we release stuck energy? How do you do it? There's probably more than one way, but wouldn't a simple obvious way be to divorce the belief? To come to the conclusion, yes, I had a bad childhood, but I'm not a child anymore. Yes, back in 1975, this happened, but that was back in 1975. Why are you still replaying anything that had to do with 1975. Well, because it hurt. I get that. Because it traumatized you. I get that. But it's continuing to hurt. It's continuing to traumatize you. And it's driving you to do unhealthy uh, things like uh, be, be an alcoholic and uh, beat your liver up. So now the hurt that was done to you, you're doing to yourself. All because of beliefs. So 
I'm not saying deny whatever happened in 1975. That's not what I'm saying. If it happened, it happened. Go ahead and allow yourself to feel it. And feel it deeply. Cry, break something, beat the pillow up. Do whatever, but do it determined that this is the last time I'm going to do this. This is the last time I'm going to replay a memory from 1975 and let it affect me right now. Because you're a completely different person right now than you were in 1975. Not one of your cells in your avatar is the same one that was there in 1975. Although you might have programmed those cells through beliefs. When humans get conscious of this and consciously do this, start doing this, uh, clearing, cleaning, resolving, uh, letting the blocks go, letting that energy that's uh, stuck in whatever chakra lets it go, suddenly that chakra is going to function the way that it's supposed to function and the entire body, mind, soul is going to feel better. Might even feel great. Might even feel uh, blissful. Let's talk about bliss for a second. The state of bliss is not some static state that we seek to achieve like heaven. When we think of heaven in terms of physicality, we think when we get to heaven, everything's going to be perfect. And you picture yourself walking into heaven through the gates, in a body, into a city that's the cleanest city you've ever seen, and everybody's nice as heck. That's not what bliss is. It's not a static state. Because co-creators are always seeking to push creation further, push themselves further, push their creations further, which presents challenges. Challenges are completely normal and healthy. So challenges are not problems, necessarily. If you choose to believe a challenge is a problem, then again, you just started entertaining belief and you're doing the same old cycle again. It's a, it's a little bit tricky at first, but it's not, it's not that tricky. And you can uh, resolve it, you can master it. <clears throat> you can <clears throat> be free from every so-called past memory and or belief that you're holding on to. So this is an exercise of letting go. Letting go. No. I want to hold on to my beliefs. I want to hold on to that which I believe is right. I have decided this, 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 and this are the truth. And I must cling to that truth at all costs. But how many times have you realized that what you thought was the truth is not was not the truth? But you were hanging on to it so desperately. What if what if what you think is the truth right now is not the truth, but you're hanging on to it desperately? What if you just let it all go?
In other words, I don't think people are readily ready to give up all their beliefs because they think they're going to get in trouble. Because they believe that they are their beliefs. You are not your beliefs. You will not get in trouble if you let them all go. How will you know this unless you do it? You're just listening to somebody on a video. Flap their gums about beliefs because this is like the most important thing that I've come to realize about this realm and why that it appears to, to be the way that it appears. If you listen or if you read the comments in videos, I'm sure you do, notice how everybody is projecting their beliefs. Everybody is speaking their beliefs. And seemingly nobody has, you know, the same beliefs. And if they think that they do, if they had a deep conversation with that other person, they would realize, well, I guess we really kind of don't have the same beliefs, do we? Because I like Trump on this, this, and this, but I don't like Trump on, you know, vaccines and masks. But I thought we were both, you know, 100% Trump fans. That's just an example. I'm not trying to bring politics into this. But it, it applies to it. It applies to everything. And this is bravery. This really is bravery. How are you going to let go of everything you believe without being brave as hell? without facing the possibility that you could get in some kind of trouble if you do that. Maybe maybe God will get you. Maybe the devil will get you if you do that. Maybe demons will get you if you do that. Maybe, uh, you know, all these maybes. Again, beliefs, beliefs, beliefs. The ego wants to bombard your conscious mind with beliefs be they past or what people would call as the present, but I'm telling you, you're not in the present moment if you still think beliefs are playing a huge part in the co-creation of reality because co the reality is not being co-created based on beliefs. It's being created the same way your breath is being created when you breathe out. Do you have to believe every time you breathe out that uh, you're emitting carbon dioxide into the uh, realm and the trees are then breathing that in themselves? You don't have to believe that. You don't have to tell yourself every time you breathe out that that's what you're doing. It's a natural function. Co-creation in the same way is a natural function. It does not require you to have all these beliefs. And it certainly doesn't require you to be tethered to the past, emotionally tied to things and events from 1975. And I would say that most people that cycle through any kind of problem where it's just cyclical and it goes on and on and on, and then they develop all these uh, other problems that stem from the root problem, they may not even really want to... Uh, uh, They don't really want the freedom. Let's put it like that. 
Yeah, they may say they do, and they may half-heartedly kick around the idea of, of, you know, complete freedom, but they really don't want that. They really don't want freedom. And I'm sorry, I must be talking about an NPC here, because an NPC doesn't really want freedom. An NPC wants uh, masters. It wants masters, it wants to be led, it wants to be told, and it wants to numb all that by drinking, by being an alcoholic. Because it doesn't have to deal with it or face it or uh, make a change or let go. It doesn't want to let go. Addiction is a trip, man. Addiction gets you into a place where you do not want to let go, even though you know this is harmful. And it's stemming from a belief or a memory from your past that is also harmful, but you don't want to let it go. And this is uh, the vicious cycle This is, these are the people that repeat history and then repeat that phrase because they expect it. They don't consciously know this. They subconsciously know this, but I mean, people are lost in ego. NPCs, you know, are lost in their egos. And so they don't really want what uh, conscious co-creators want. We want uh, resolve. We want answer. We want balance and harmony within our reality. And we get it. And we get it. Why? Because we're willing to let go. We're willing to see what an NPC would run away from. We're willing to 